Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PEGX podcast. Today, we're going to try to define Class 9 miscellaneous hazardous waste materials. Whether for delivery or disposal, there are strict labeling and storage requirements for the transportation of hazardous materials by plane, truck, train, or boat. Among them is classification. Classification is important because it informs transporters about what procedures to follow and precautions to take for a particular kind of hazmat in transit. And in case of an accident, clear classification and labeling ensures that emergency personnel know what they're dealing with. There are nine categories of hazmat classification. The first eight are explosives, gases, flammable liquids, flammable solids, oxidizing substances, organic peroxides, toxic or infectious substances, radioactive material, and corrosives. And so one might reasonably wonder, what is the ninth? Well, since you've asked, you could say that Class 9 miscellaneous hazardous waste is the government's metaphorical junk drawer. In this case, the government is the U.S. Department of Transportation, the DOT, which under 49 CFR requires you to sort anything that might be hazardous waste into one of the eight aforementioned categories. You might be interested to know that 49 CFR refers to one of the 50 titles that comprise the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations. The penultimate 49th has to do with transportation, which informs the conversation here. So what exactly goes into Class 9? Whatever doesn't fit into one of classes 1 through 8 lands into class 9. What could be simpler? Well, not so fast. Submitted for your approval. While classes 1 through 8 have specific definitions vis-a-vis -vis the hazards they present, for example, flashpoints, rates of corrosion, lethal dosages, etc., class 9 parameters are purposefully nebulous and thereby potentially applicable to many materials that might not normally be subject to the embarrassing wealth of hazmat regulations we otherwise enjoy. We should also mention here that there's no such thing as a hazardous waste that can be properly categorized as class 9 and at the same time be at home in any one of the classes 1 through 8. Interesting paradox. So, do you have a class 9 hazardous waste on site? The usual suspects are materials that have anesthetic, noxious, or a quote similar quality that could cause quote, extreme annoyance or discomfort to nearby persons, especially the plane pilots, truck drivers, trainmen, or sailors transporting the stuff. Included are hazardous substances and waste, marine pollutants, and elevated temperature materials, the last of which are things that have to be transported at high temperatures. Think asphalt, roofing tar, and so forth. Typical examples of Class 9 miscellaneous hazardous waste include, but are not limited to, acetylalamide ammonia, ammonium nitrate fertilizers, asbestos, aviation-regulated liquid, automobile airbags, battery-powered equipment, battery-powered vehicles, benzaldehyde, chemical kits, first aid kits, lithium batteries, magnetized materials, plastic molding compound, self-inflating life vests, and sulfur. A question we get asked a lot is, are e-cigarettes class 9? E-cigarettes have three main components, a cartridge that holds the flavored nicotine solution, a heating element, and a lithium ion battery, each of which, in quantity, requires hazardous waste management. On the consumer level, many e-cigarette manufacturers and vendors offer recycling programs with the incentive of discounted or free products. On the commercial side, various jurisdictions stipulate that waste containing any amount of nicotine requires hazardous waste management. This can include the vaping liquid itself, shipping or storage containers for e-cigarette cartridges, used e-cigarette cartridges that have not been triple rinsed, wastewater from triple rinsing e-cigarette cartridges, and e-cigarettes themselves. As to lithium-ion batteries, for retail consumers, the EPA doesn't regulate the disposal of batteries in small quantities, although local jurisdictions might have specific rules. For commercial users, recycling large quantities of batteries is regulated under the universal rules of hazardous waste, which are imprecise enough to require careful interpretation and expert advice. To ensure that a hazardous material is properly managed and or disposed of, it's essential that it's classified properly. 
Of course, this gets thorny in the case of Class 9 hazardous materials, in that their main delimiting feature is a robust defiance to categorization. Thereby, the experience, knowledge, and technical resources of a reputable hazardous waste management company are essential to keeping you safe and legal. This brings us to the place where we always advise our listeners to get expert advice before proceeding. Remember, you're responsible for the hazardous waste from cradle to grave in EPA parlance, which means that selecting a transportation and or treatment company that meets EPA muster is your responsibility. Hire the wrong company and you could be on the hook big time. If you need help managing your hazardous waste, check us out online at hazardouswasteexperts.com. Thanks for listening.